Hello out there. Um, today I'm going to take a look at this Asus Sonar sound card, which is the uh, Asus Sonar U7, the first generation. This is known to have some issues where when the LED itself um, or the device itself tries to initialize, uh, it wouldn't initialize. Um, sometimes you can get it working, sometimes you can't. We can try over here. Uh, I'm going to plug in my USB connector here. As you can see, before it was blinking, um, and now you see it keeps blinking. Sometimes it blinks fast, it depends on how you connect up your setup. And what happens is if you touch this area here, um, right over here, I won't show it right now. If I touch it now, of course it doesn't work when you try it out. Let's try to disconnect it again, put it in. Now it works. So what just happened is we touched, I've been looking into this, we touched the area right here and what we got here is uh, what is called a crystal oscillator. Its job is to make a stable frequency for this chip to operate on, um, which in this case is 12 megahertz. And then we have two capacitors and a resistor around it. Um, and the problem with this was this IC cannot start up properly. And this can be caused by if you haven't done your validation correctly when you design this. Um, these capacitors here, if they're too large or too small, you have problems starting up this IC. If the resistor right here is too high, you can also have problems to start up. This is actually here to do a kickstart to help this thing create this oscillation. So if any of these components are incorrect, it will cause this one to not oscillate. Uh, when you get it up running, it's typically running okay, but it's not ideal. Um, you can have you can look at this signal here, and it's gonna be it's gonna be bad. So what is happening is we are when you do this, we're either creating um, a higher capacitor, in, or we are actually creating a higher capacitor across this, or we are changing the resistance. But this is a really low resistor. This is 31 ohms. So I don't think that is the case because typically your fingers is, um, I think it's a minimum 10 kilo ohms maximum. Typically it's around 100 kilo ohms. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove those two capacitors we have right here. Um, before I try just using a tweezer, um, because that will be easier for some of the people here to do this, but I am certain that I'm almost ripping these pads because, um, of course, this these pads right here are typically connected to ground, which is the whole area here, um, and the same on this side. Sorry, this multimeter. Um, so what we want to do is I want to desolve these two and see if it works. So I disconnected my USB. I'm going to take my two soldering ends here. I'm going to heat up one side and heat up the other. There you go. I'm just going to put them all here. And tombstone. No, I'm just going to put it here. It's just for not losing the capacitors for now while debugging this. Because I haven't tried this out yet. Come on. It sticks. So, let's try to plug it in. Let's see the LED down here and plugs it in. No. Bam! On instantly. It works fine. So, this might be the reason to uh, thing to solve it. If you got electronics knowledge and want to do this correctly, um, this is going to be nerdy. Then we're going to figure out the capacitor value of these and try to find some data sheet on this IC here. Uh, typically it recommends uh, the capacitive load for this one. And then of course install new capacitors according to what the data sheet says. Uh, I do not have an LCR meter to measure these two. Um, so I can't really recommend any new sizes of uh, capacitors for this. But 
I think that right now running it without capacitors might be the most simple way to get this up and running. Um, if I get a hands on an LCR meter and measure these out and figure out something with the date sheet, uh, look in the description. I'll mention the uh, capacitor values for this. Um, so I am going to pause the video and just let this be connected, turned off, and then let everything discharge. Because that's typically what you see after it's been discharged for some time and then try to turn it on. Um, it struggles turning on. It's not when you try to plug it in, like here. It just plugs in and works. So I'm going to try that and I'll be back. So after I tried to modify this uh, by removing those two capacitors there for the oscillator, the thing has been working perfectly. Every time I tried powering this up, it has been fully functional. No problems at all. So by removing these two capacitors that is loading the crystal, we are actually fixing the issue that we've seen in the first generation of these ASUS uh, so on, our U7, where it wouldn't start up. So, simply remove these two capacitors here. That will solve the issue that is known with this. Thank you for watching, and I hope this will solve your issues.